Thanks for coming back to a special Yes Network presentation. Brooklyn Nets Media Day. Ryan Rucco, Sarah Kustak with you, and we are now joined live by Nets General Manager Sean Marks. You have a busy summer, Sean. Some things happen, go on a little bit. Uh, you all right? Yeah, I'm just glad we're rolling the balls out tomorrow. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> Sean, there's obviously um, there, there's so many different things to dive into with you. Um, I, I guess first things first, we'll start towards where we're at now. How do things feel right now with this group collectively? Yes, Kevin, Kai back in the fold, but, but the team as a whole as you guys get ready to start training camp tomorrow. Yeah, look, I think what we've seen the last couple of weeks is guys come back into the gym. <clears throat> you know, there's a level of uh, anxiousness about getting back around each other. There's a lot of smiles. Um, guys have been competitive. You know, it's, it's that's that's what we're all about, right? Seeing this group together, seeing them play together, start formulating these bonds both on and off the court. So that's the fun thing f for me right now. Is, and then, of course, t you know, tomorrow when Steve gets to roll the balls out there and we get after it. That's, you know, when you can when you can do that, the other the rest sort of gets, you know, pushed to the wayside a little bit the rest there's a lot in sure. the rest mm. in you look back i mean we can date back to two seasons the past two seasons but in particular last season all the moving parts different iterations of the the group and in all the challenges that came along with it but after the postseason and the way things finish what was it like for you as you were initially trying to approach the off season figure out what was going on with the group and then deal with the the trade request by Kevin. Yeah, look, I think collectively as an organization, um, none of us were happy. Just to be brutally honest, when when you don't live up to your expectations, you know, you, you fail, you fall short, whatever, however you want to put it. This gave us an opportunity to really do a deep dive and reflect on, you know, are our processes right? You know, it does everything we do for you know whether that's from staffing, from roster management, coaching, you name it. We looked at everything. We did that collectively as a group. From, you know, myself, Steve, Joe, and every every department. We looked at that and said, look, you know, you, you can't point the finger. You've got to look in the mirror and say, could I have done things differently here? That's not the outcome we wanted. And, and, and again, nobody's going to sit here and make excuses. We don't want to sit here and go, well, we lost X amount of games because of this mandate or this mandate or that. So, you know, it's time to move on for, from that. But again, you know, take heart and learn from some of the mistakes that were made along the way. When Kevin made the request, did you think I'm going to have to trade him? Or did you think? I'm going to try and find a way to still keep him here. How did you navigate that? Well, it's a tricky one. Um, I think when a player of that you know, stature comes to you and says, look, this is this may not be the place for me. I want to, I want to look somewhere else. I mean, you've, you, what can you learn from that? You know, again, sit back and say, okay, why do you want why do you want out? You know, mm -hmm. is this, you know, can we change this at all? Or are you just completely steadfast in, in, in your approach right now, Kevin? So, you know, we spent a lot of time talking, you know, as a group with including Kevin and so forth. And obviously we came back to, you know, we're, we're here and, and we're going to go after it again with him. And, and we're very thankful for that. Um, you know, that's, that's not an easy ultimatum to handle. And you've yeah. got to own that, you know, as a GM, you've got to own that as an ownership, you know, Joe and Clara had to own that, you know, and the coaching staff, Steve, right? So it's on all of us. When you say not an easy ultimatum to handle, there's, there was a lot of not easy things to go on. And Kevin spoke, uh, Kyrie spoke, Ben spoke, obviously, earlier. And they seemed very open, insightful, and honest about conversations yep. that were had, hard conversations that were had. Kyrie mentioned, uh, you know, with his contract extension, a tough pill to swallow and the way things went on with him. What do you think that can do for this group moving forward in just the approach of, of going through a lot of uncomfortable awkwardness to get to the place that you're at? Yeah, I think if you look back six years ago, we, we, we prided ourselves on having a chip on our shoulder and something to prove, flying under the radar, whatever cliche you want to use. But now, I mean, you hear the guys up on the podium and, and they have that chip on their shoulder. You know, there's there's a level of humility uh, amongst all of us. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's nice when you're back against the wall and, and really kind of nobody may be expecting you to be able, well the naysayers are still out there so well let's go prove them wrong you yeah. know and I think you saw the guys up there being able to be very honest and upfront about you know some of their emotions and some of their feelings and what they went through this summer you know people talk about like you know maybe what Steve and I had to go through I mean the whole organization had to go through it and you know reflect on it. You know you talked about Sean at the year end of your press conference some of the getting back to the culture that was being built and last year being I don't know your exact terms. We're talking about kind of like a, a bump in the road or, or a step back. When Kyrie and Kevin are talking about those honest conversations, how much of it also was you guys as an organization telling them, hey, 
this is what we need culturally from you as well here if we're going to make this work. I mean, uh, I'm sure it's a two-way street, but what, what kind of was important for the organization to get across that these are things that are going to be important for us collectively, no matter who's a part of this group moving forward? Yeah, ab it takes everybody. You know, this is not, dis the culture is not decided by one guy in an office, right? This is decided by an organization as a whole, and we have to have an identity that fits with the brand out here that's, you know, that's always been the Brooklyn way, and it will continue to be the Brooklyn way. So for us, it's important to have those conversations with those guys, um, include them in it. But end of the way, end of the day, you know, it goes back to our, um, our press conference earlier in the year, like, you know, have people that want to be part of something bigger than themselves, you know, a competitive group. And, and I think that's what we have here. When you finally come to that conclusion uh, for Kevin and, and you guys to continue the partnership, what was what, what was the, the final conversation like or what kind of got you guys all to that place of, hey, not only do we want to do this, but we can do this even after everything we've been through and we can do it right and build what we want to build? Honestly, I think it's, it's best when you're face to face, when you look somebody in the eye and tell them like, look, this is how we're building this organization. This is what we're doing. This is how we're going to go ahead and do it. And you're the right guy to be a part of this. And, uh, you know, he obviously took some time to think about it and, and came back and said, yeah, this is where I can... This is where I can lead my championship aspirations. And, and, you know, he has a legacy at stake like we all do. We've talked a lot about lineup, roster, combinations, optionality that comes along with it. Um, the coaching staff, obviously the first two seasons for Steve Nash, unlike probably any other for the first two years of, of a head coaching career. Uh, some different pieces on that staff as well this season. What's, what's your expectation, anticipation? What are you looking for in terms of growth out of that group and out of the staff? You know, I, I think what makes Steve special is there's, there's nothing he has hasn't seen on the court and off the court that our players haven't sort of gone through or maybe gone through. So there's an area of expertise. There's some storytelling that Steve can do that can certainly help our players. I mean, he's been it. He's he's been to the top of the top, right? And, and as, as close as you possibly can be. So, you know, I hope our guys really utilize him for what he is and his experience out there. Um, I, what I've seen so far this summer from, from our coaches and the dedication that's been put in, you know, they too have a chip on their shoulder. Everybody has something to prove here, you know. So, um, again, and it gets back to just, just literally being excited to get back on the hardwood, you know, and once this media day is over, we can sort of <laughs> forget about that and get back to what the important things are. One of the other things Kevin talked about was even as he had requested the trade, noticing what you were doing with the roster and liking what was being built and still envisioning how he would fit, what were some of your focuses with who you did bring in here in the offseason, whether it's T.J. Warren or it's Sumner or obviously Royce O'Neal in that trade and, and kind of the, the pieces that you brought in to augment the stars mm -hmm. who are, in fact, back. Yeah, well, you're, you're always looking at your roster throughout the season, seeing where the holes are, what might fit, what didn't fit, what didn't work and so forth, and, and where our holes are moving forward and what are the, some of the complementary pieces around there. And I think, you know, you start with, with, with Royce, you know, the, the trade that we made for him, knowing the contract that he's on and, and not really being able to find a player like that in free agency. So being able to trade for him, knowing that here's our window, what he brings to us on and off the court from, you know, from the, the defensive person and he is, you know, being able to spread the floor like he can. Um, the one thing that's not talked about enough is Joe Harris being back. Yeah, you know, yeah. People, people we've here been talking the, about a lot on yeah. the show. I know you were doing other yeah. busy things, but the, we've been pumping it. Only we were loud enough for everyone to hear us in here. So. And I almost look at I look at Joe as as a little bit of a new addition, right? He he's back, and that that's going to be super excited. But to bring in, you know, Mark Keith and Edmund uh, and TJ with their area of expertise, they all have something in common, which is they have something to prove. Mm -hmm. You know, every single one of them has something to prove from a previous season or a couple seasons that have been lost. Ben obviously is someone there's a lot of focus on and, and how he'll fit his style of play, him coming back from the back surgery. W what have you noticed out of him this summer? I know he's been here, been in the gym. Um, w what have you seen from him? I think it's just his confidence. You know, I think talking to him, you know, when we f when we first acquired him, it it's it's a different Ben, you know, and he's got to become accustomed with who we are and, you know, we're going to put our arm around him, support him and and uh, do everything we possibly can for, for him to deliver on the court for, for, for this group and be in the best place possible possible succeed and I think we've seen that we've looked at the dedication that he's put in this summer I mean you could look at his body I yeah. mean he is 
he's a big man out there, <laughs> and it's, it's been impressive to to see to see him go. And the the way he goes is a little bit like our engine. I mean, he's he, he'll fuel us. I mean, the speed with which a guy like that can play with is pretty impressive. I'm waiting to see if his accent comes out a little bit more being around you and Patty <laughs> <laughs> and some well. of the staff. It, it, it's downplayed a bit throughout the course of his career, but I, I think it. Patty's it accent's a lot it. stronger than mine yeah. now. So I yeah. don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Sean, you've addressed this in part, and you're about to go to a press conference, and I know once you get past this day, you'll be happy to not have to address this anymore, but just a few a few bookkeeping things for people at home that I'm sure are wondering. One, did you ever come close to trading Kevin Durant? Do you feel like you were ever there was ever a deal that was almost made? Um, look, I think we have to be honest about it, and when a guy asks you know, yeah. to be traded, you have to do your due diligence. So yeah, absolutely, we, we, we made those calls, and uh, we at least picked up the phone when, <laughs> when, when teams called. I, I could be honest, I wasn't making a whole lot of outgoing calls. I mean, yeah. why would you do that? Um, <laughs> and They're going to come in when Kevin Durant's available. Exactly. There yeah. was no shortage of that. But when you, you, know, you heard him up there, I mean, it's, he, he even admitted to it. It's, he's yeah. not an easy person to trade, right? Mm -hmm. When you're trading Kevin to get like for like. I'm not sure how you do that. So There was also a report that he wanted you and Steve gone. Was that your impression at one point with Kevin this offseason? Um, look, we, he and I never had that exact conversation together, but like, uh, you know, I think we have, there's mutual respect for one another. You know, I, I obviously respect the heck out of wh who, what Kevin is on the court and who he is as a person. I love our upfront conversations. We've been brutally honest from day one here. So, you know, this has been a tough offseason and, and for, for a lot of people, so let's own it. And, and it's, it's, it's been tough for Kevin. And, and who, I don't want to put words in his mouth as yeah. to what he was feeling and what he was going through, but at the same time, my job here is to, to put the right pieces around him and to, and to help you know, collectively here lead this organization and get to where we want to be. And then the other one is Kyrie. He talked a lot about having honest conversations and getting to a place where he also felt like he needed to get to know everybody going on this journey as Ben goes by, going on, going Going on this journey together, getting to know it, it sounded like he was implying beyond just his teammates, but everybody here collectively. When you guys came to a place of where you're now at in harmony, what what was, was that conversation like, or what were those interactions like to bring you to a place where he clearly feels like he's all in yeah. on this group and what you need, and you guys seem to get across the message that you needed to at the end of last season as well? Yeah, I, well, I think it's it's mutually beneficial for both sides, right? I mean, you. you you heard him before, like how he was thinking about what, what else is out there is the grass greener, but then, you know, he wants to finish something he started started here in Brooklyn. I think he brings up a good point, too, getting to know one another, both on and off the court, and we, we talk about that a lot, but when you miss over 200 games, yeah. you know, and I'm not talking about just Curry, I'm talking about the, you know, the rotation players for us last season. That's tough to sort of build camaraderie and community, uh, you know, a sense of chemistry, you know, on the court. So hopefully this year, knock on wood, you heard all all the guys talking about health and getting after it and, and being around each other. So, you know, see where it goes. How excited are you just to see the pieces you put together out on the floor collectively, Sean, hopefully with somewhat of a runway this season to actually play together? Very excited. I mean, these guys have put in a, a lot of work this offseason, so I'm, I'm extremely proud of what the staff has done and, and what the players have done. I mean, there's a lot of guys who have been in, in Brooklyn for a lot of this offseason. So, you know, let's roll the balls out. All right, Sean. Thanks, well, Sean. we appreciate the time. We know uh, it was a wild offseason. We know some of these questions aren't the easiest to answer, but we appreciate you being with us us here live and don't worry you get to go do it again with everybody else in just a little bit so wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's sean marks next general manager joining us live still a little more